What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the next installment of our Warrior Tanking Guides. What we're going to talk about today is threat and how you generate it. Um, we're going to cover some of the abilities that warriors have, the way I like to use them, and uh, the amount of threat that they generate. I'm going to preface the entire discussion with um, the abilities we're going to discuss today have an innate amount of threat, meaning if you use Shield Slam, it does a base amount of threat, and then it has additional threat um, from the damage that is actually dealt. The same thing with Heroic Strike, the same thing with Devastate, the same thing with a lot of the other abilities. So uh, what we want to look at is a couple of changes that they've made and um, what they've done is they've drastically increased the amount of damage that you get from uh, Revenge which is really nice. It's a damage dealing ability as well. It has a high amount of threat that it causes. Uh, in addition to that they've now made it so Thunderclap will uh, cause additional threat to up to four targets that it hits. It's still limited to four targets. And we have a really cool ability that comes in with the Burning Crusade, Devastate. Uh, it doesn't show the tooltip there because that's a macro, but Devastate is a uh, an ability that sunders, causes a Sunder armor effect. In addition, it does 50% weapon damage, um, plus 35 for each application of Sunder that is on the target. And as usual, Sunder cannot stack more than five times. Now, Devastate is a unique ability in that it has its uh, effect of sundering the target and it also has the effect of Devastate and the damage that it does from Devastate. Now, uh, I get a lot of my resources and information from the Warrior Fight Club Discord, which is a Discord dedicating to theory crafting warriors uh, through Classic and Burning Crusade Classic. I am going to reference a sheet here where they've done uh, a bunch of theory crafting and a bunch of math. There is links that explain some of that up here on how they tested the values. I'm not going to get into all of those details. But what I want to look at here is a couple of things like, for instance, on rank 3 Devastate. Uh, this is the numeric threat value that a, the ability will cause. It has 100 threat for the Devastate itself. And uh, there's 301.5. And there's a little asterisk here, which is a notation for having the, um, the rank 6 Sunder Armor. So what will happen is if you're using Devastate, it will do 108 threat, and then it will do 301.5 threat for the application of Sunder, and then any damage that the ability does on top of that will generate additional threat. That's all impacted by, you know, being in which stance you're in, whether it's battle stance, it'll be, it'll be even whether it's defensive stance, you get extra, as well if you've got uh, defiance, it'll get extra, and if you're in berserker stance, it would do less. So um, the thing is you only get that bonus 301.5 up to five stacks of Sunder. So it, it has a reduced value of use after uh, you get those five stacks. The next ability we're gonna look at here is the rank six, six shield slam. It has a base value of 305 threat that it causes. In addition to that, you're gonna get the, uh, the extra threat from the damage that it does. Now the damage that shield slam does is based off of your block value. If you look over to the other side of the screen here, you can see on my extended character stats, which is a, available uh, at CurseForge as an add-on, it shows my block value is 332. So I'm gonna get that in addition to the damage that Shield Slam does as well. Now you can increase this by getting items that increase block value, or you do get a small amount of block value increase uh, by, your, uh, by your strength. So those are ways to increase that stat, but primarily you're going to get it from the block value, which like if you look at your shield, it has a, uh, a 108 block on the Crest of Shatar. In addition, uh, we're getting a 24 additional block value, as you can see down there in the green text. So that increases uh, my shield slam value as well. Those are things to look at on different pieces of gear. Um, now you have Revenge. It does a base value of 200, plus you get extra threat for the damage that it does. Now Revenge, we discussed earlier, has a dramatically increased amount of damage than it did in Classic, which is nice because it is a big damage dealer for you. And you have Heroic Strike doing a base of 194, and um, then you have you know your additional damage as well, plus your stances and all those things. Now we have a, um, a little bit of a change here where Thunderclap causes an increased amount of uh, threat up to four targets that it hits, which wasn't a factor in uh, Classic. 
there is an explanation down here on Devastate. There is an explanation down here on the Thunderclap. I'm going to put a link to this document below so you guys can take a moment and read that, look at some of these things. And if you have any questions about it, you can always reference the way they collected the data and make your own, you know, your, your own evaluation at that point. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about oh, uh, one of the two notes here I want to make is uh, Battleshout does make threat based on uh, the number of targets that it hits. So maximum rank will create 69 threat per target that you buff with Battleshout. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And as well, Demoralizing Shout rank 7 will cause 56 threat per target that it is applied to. So if we're going to come over here and we're going to look at some of the abilities the way i usually like to initiate a combat a lot of dungeons you'll see i'll do a bow pull or i'll do a throne item pull and i'll pull around a corner because what i want to do is i want to pile up all those casters all the melee and try to put them in one central location so they're not split up because you have a difficult time creating threat on targets that are far from you so um if i'm going to do that i'm going to generally when i make the pool i will blood rage on my way back to where i'm going to pull to and um, that'll give me enough rage to do a battle shout. So when I do battle shout, I'm going to apply it to myself. And usually I try to make sure I wait until I'm near or close to other targets in my party. So that way it will apply to them. And how that generates threat on the incoming NPCs is if I have five targets that I buff with battle shout, that 69 threat per person, and I have five incoming NPCs, it takes all the threat I generate on those five people or from buffing those five people and it applies spread out through all the targets. So if it's five buff people and five income targets, it'll give you 69 threat per target. Now, if it is five people you're buffing and six incoming targets, it takes that total number of uh, threat generated by Battle Shout and it divides it among all six targets. So you're going to have less threat the more targets that you have. Uh, this is not a way to tank. This is not a way to hold threat on targets. The idea behind doing this is to create a small amount of threat on all the incoming targets so that if a player is still sitting and drinking, or if there are totems down, or if a player casts a shielding or a buff on themselves, or there may be a renew or something going on when you're making that pool, it's going to stop those, those mobs or those NPCs from charging over to the healer, charging over to the guy sitting on the ground drinking, and doing a bunch of damage to them. It just gives you a little bit of face value threat when you make the pool. Um, after that, I would try to, depending upon my range situation and what happens, um, if you can, Shield Slam would be your ideal next ability to use on the primary kill target. And then after that, I would either, for a grouping of maybe three up to uh, four targets, more likely probably on the lower end, two to three targets. I would just tab between them, you know, doing either Shield Slam if it's available, Revenge if it's available, or Devastate if I don't have one of the other two available. Um, so that uh, you're, you're splitting up the, the threat, you're making threat on all the targets and no one's going to pull and you just kind of put a little bit of extra emphasis on your marked Skull or marked X, whatever your kill order you've established is. Now, if you have a large pool of mobs, um, you know, you'll see this in certain dungeons where there's big groupings of skeletons that are of regular non-elite mobs, which aren't as dangerous to the rest of the group. But, you know, you want to pull them together as best you can, at least so that they can be AoE'd or AoE'd through Frost Traps or Nova. How, whatever, whatever group comp you have, you're, gonna, you're going to take them down in a different type of way. But um, using Demoralizing Shout does produce threat on all the targets it hits within 10 yards. It doesn't have a high threat value, um, but again, it's still going to help keep those mobs off of you know players that are eating drinking buffing totems those kind of things it helps keep uh them on you for a period of time now if you're going to be grouping and killing you know four plus mobs or even up to four mobs because thunderclap hits four mobs a lot of times i would try to do a similar situation or um you know where i'm going to try to have a kill order in the targets marked with the uh, in-game markers I'm going to maybe Shield Slam, Devastate Revenge on that first one, and then it's going to be, you know, Thunderclap, Cleave, Thunderclap, Cleave, Thunderclap, Cleave. And as I have extra Rage on uh, targets, I'm going to try and pop another Shield Slam or Revenge, or I might weave a Devastate in there. But uh, one way that really helps you hold on to targets like that is I have an add on called Threat Plates. And Threat Plates will, based upon the stance you're in, tell you, you know, green is good. Uh, yellow is danger zone and red is bad. So if you're in 
uh, defensive stance, if it's green, it's attacking you. If it's yellow, it's close to being pulled off of you. And if it's red, it's generally hitting someone else. So what I'll do is in a grouping like that, I'll, you know, I'll be minding or watching those, uh, those health bars and plates above the NPC's heads that show me, okay, this one's green, I'm good. This one's green, I'm good. This one's yellow. And while I'm thunderclapping and cleaving, I would, okay, switch to that one that's yellow, maybe throw a shield slam, a devastate, a heroic, whatever you've got the rage for, add it and try to to make that guy green again so he's attacking you the other thing is you can you can look at your uh threat meter which as your it'll give you threat per the target you have targeted on the classic threat meter so if you target skull it'll tell you you have 10k 5k 3k however much threat you have and then it should show the other players below that now if you're at 10,000 and the next closest player is at 3,000 and the mob's half life guess what i'm going to do i'm not even going to worry about that guy anymore because if it peels off me it's going to die almost like that anyway and if it stays on me good to go i'm going to look at the next one engage how much health it has how much threat i have on it and how much threat other players have and then i'm going to say okay where do i need to be and i'm going to continue all the time using those abilities as best i can to uh to keep the threat on all the targets that i need to um yeah there's there's things like that that are just useful uh, you know, if you've got some tips and tricks you'd like to use where, uh, you know, you'll see me, like I said, Blood Rage, Battle Shout on my return uh, to a pool point. That's helpful. I like to use that. You know, um, you know the, the, the Cleave and the Thunderclap are great for up to four targets. Once you get beyond that, Warriors really do start to have a difficult time, I think, holding all the targets. And that's where you're going to want to maybe use some crowd control or you're just going to, at times, I'll even say, hey, guys, uh, we have good DPS. I'm not going to tank Skull. Skull is a healer target. It doesn't do a lot of damage. I just want you guys to burst him down, and I'm going to worry about these other three or four. And sometimes that's a good way to do it. Or you might say, hey, I need this target crowd controlled. I can only keep so many at a time. Um, and, and that's some of the differences between Paladins, Druids, and other classes. Paladins have a great uh, you know, ability to hold AoE threat with their Consecrate and the way their, their blocks and the things like that work for them. Warriors struggle a little bit more with that, but Warriors do amazingly well on, uh, on small groups or single targets. And uh, that's just the way you have to play the class. You got to know the limitations and you got to know the capabilities of a given class. If you guys have little tips, little tricks, things you like to do while you're tanking or any questions, feel free to, um, to make a comment down below. Let me know what that is or maybe someone else could use the information you have. I, again, am not the end-all, be-all. This is the way I like to play. This is the information I have, and this is how I utilize it. If you guys find something more, feel free to come over to my Twitch, Dokken underscore TV. Join us there. We can spark up a discussion. You know, I would love to, uh, to hear or talk about more. So uh, hope to see you over there. And as always, until next time, have a good one.